Tesla makes some awesome vehicles with a lot of technology packed in and I've kind of learned over the years that there is so much technology and little features packed into these cars that even people that own the cars, even if they've owned them for a long time, miss out on some of the awesome features in their vehicles. So today we're going to go over a bunch of really cool features in Tesla vehicles that even Tesla owners didn't realize their vehicles had. Double tap to park is a really interesting feature that uh, is going to be a little weird for this video because newer Teslas that don't have ultrasonic sensors still, it's been like a year, are not coming with summon or smart summon. Tesla, like why is it on your website? If it's okay, little mini rant over, but on the website it says summon and smart summon, but you won't get it for now as of the making of this video. But if you have summon on your car, if you still have the ultrasonic sensors, this feature is very cool. Check out Tesla's secret driverless auto park feature. So we're in park, you just double click the park button and this menu comes up and you can choose which direction you want it to park in. So I'm just gonna click this and then I'm gonna leave the car and it's gonna park itself and stop at the end up there. So you can see there's nobody in the car Close it, and off we go. It's just gonna drive itself, park itself in that spot, and it will automatically stop as soon as it reaches the end here. So you can see nobody's in there. And it'll just park right up to the fence there. That's it, all on its own. Autopilot is a great feature that comes standard with every Tesla now, and you can use it on the highway or wherever to make your driving a little easier and more relaxed. But what a lot of people don't realize is the little autopilot symbol while the car is turning, that autopilot symbol also turns. Just a fun little Easter egg, not that useful, but this has been happening since the beginning, since I've had my Tesla five years ago, and I think a lot of people still don't realize that that happens. And did you know you could save $250 on your Tesla order? Just use my patron riches referral code that you can find down below. Thank you so much for supporting the channel, Rich. Next up in the second row, you do have a headrest in the middle. Now many vehicles have this, but Tesla sometimes integrates their features a little more stealthfully and make things a little more smooth and streamlined. And when they do that, sometimes you miss it. But yes, if you hop in the back of your vehicle, the middle seat, does have a headrest that you can just pop up if you need it. So let's talk about some other features that are kind of hidden from Tesla owners in the vehicle. When you plug in your car, a little lock comes up to hold that charger in place. And sometimes, it's never happened to me, but it is possible that it gets stuck. And if that happens, you can't drive anywhere. You're stuck where you are. Well, luckily, Tesla did add a manual mechanism, which is pretty rare for them. They try not to have anything manual in the vehicle so that you can release this in case of an emergency. Now, if you look in your trunk, of course, it depends on your exact model, but it's going to be somewhere near the charger, of course. And if you kind of peek back there, you'll find a little hole in your trunk that you can reach in. And depending on the year of your vehicle, the handle might be a little different, but there will be a little pull string that you can pull on and that will manually unlock your charger from the car. So for some reason, electric electronically that's not working, you can manually pull that out. I've heard people use it if it gets frozen, uh, but I think this is more in case something breaks. Again, it's never happened to me, I've never had to use it, but it's good to know that it's there. Now after you do take that charger out of your car, if you look in your app, the little charging bar is gone. You can no longer edit your charge stats, say you want to charge up to 90% or 80%, or if you have charge on solar, if you want to change that setting it disappears. But luckily in your Tesla app, you can click the little battery icon at the top left and that will bring up your charging stats once again. Once you bring those up, you can edit those charging stats even though your car is not plugged in. So if you want to change them and you don't want to forget, your car will be ready to go. The next time you plug in, it'll listen to whatever settings you applied. Since we're in the app, I will tell you about changing your icons in the app. Now this isn't a secret exactly. Tesla will tell you how to do this, but there is a secret related to this. By default, there are four icons on your Tesla app, quick icons you can access when you first open in the app without having to dig into the menus more. Well, if you go and you hold on them, you can actually edit them, which is great. But if you hold one of them, so say I want to add the vent option, I hold the vent option and now I can drag it around as you can see. But if I use my second finger, so my thumb is holding on my screen and I'm using the index finger on my other hand to move this around. If you slide it over, you can see there's another option. And if you let go, I now have five icons on my row in my app. Now you can edit these as you like. Keep in mind, this isn't officially supported. This is kind of like a little hack Easter egg thing. But when I go back, it does allow me. Now I have five quick toggles 
on my uh, bar there that I can use anytime I want. Now, since we're in the app talking about charging our vehicles, what if you get stranded? What if your Tesla runs out of energy? Well, normally you have to have a tow, but there is another option. And that option is the Anchor Solix F3800 portable power station, who is today's video sponsor. So here is my house with my solar panels that I love. And a lot of you know that we live out in the middle of the woods. There is really not much out here. And because of that, we lose power all the time. All it takes is one of these trees falling over and bam, we lose power for three or four days at a time. It happens all the time. First, let's talk about the mighty six kilowatts of power. With both 120 and 240 volt dual voltage output, the Solix F3800 is a powerhouse ready to meet all your electricity demands. The Solix F3800 also has expandable battery capacity. It starts out with 3.8 kilowatt hours of capacity and is expandable all the way up to a gigantic 53.8 kilowatt hours for the heaviest energy usage. Now, not only does it have all of that power, it can charge your EV at up to six kilowatts, which is really fast. That's pretty much the same speed I charge it at all the time off of the grid. And this is coming just from a battery and that is the base stat. You can get more storage so that this battery can charge your EV even more so you can go even farther even if the power is out, even if you're off grid. You can manage and monitor your batteries with smart app control on your smartphone. You have plenty of versatility with your charging options. Directly charge your inlet box, EVs and RVs, or use grid, portable solar panels, or home power panels for recharging. Not only is the F3800 super powerful with high capacity storage, it is super easy to use. It's very user friendly. You can hook it up to your house. It can collect the solar for you. It can power your entire home for up to two weeks, depending on what you're doing. It's also a green alternative to gas generators. Say goodbye to dirty, loud gas generators and enjoy clean, reliable energy to power your entire home through the existing inlet box and transfer switch. Now, one of my favorite things about this product, listen, it is super quiet out here. You can hear the birds chirping, a little bit of wind, not much else. If the Anchor Solix was sitting right here next to me, you would hear nothing. It is super quiet. It's super clean. It's not like a gas generator. We have one of those and I hate using that thing because it's so incredibly loud. It's also toxic, so we can't bring it inside when the power's out. It has to stay outside and we have to run cables all over the place. With the Anchor Solix F3800, you could bring that right inside of your home, plug in whatever you need, power everything. It's super quiet, super clean, very user-friendly, and most importantly, incredibly safe. Comparably, it's also a budget-friendly home power system. Get 80% of traditional home power storage systems at half the price. With high wattage, you have uninterrupted power supply for all of your home appliances, including your RV, your electric vehicle, so you can make power outages a thing of the past. You also have the flexibility of powering various appliances, all with different voltages, all at the same time. And let's not forget about the powerful capacity expansion. You can have single to triple unit expansion. You start with 3.8 kilowatt hours, which is still a respectable amount of energy and expand all the way up to 26.9 kilowatt hours with one unit extension or go big with two unit extensions for a whopping 53.8 kilowatt hours. That is a huge amount of energy. Depending on what you're doing, this could cover home use for two weeks or even more. So thank you to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Check out their product at the link below and pick yours up. If you wanna get the best deals, use that link down below in my description. Now hopping back into the car, if you have a Model Y, which is Tesla's most popular model worldwide, the back seats in the Model Y actually can recline. So if you have the five seater, you can recline those back seats just a little bit with the button at the top if you wanna do that. And then in the seven seat Model Y, there's a slightly different way to do it, but you can also recline the seats in the seven seater as well. And and the seven seater allows you to move that bench seat forward and backward depending on if you have people in the back or you want you know to move things for cargo or whatever you need so you do have some versatility in those seats now while you're back there you should definitely check out the coat hangers a lot of people don't realize even though this is a normal standard feature on pretty much any car you look at the model y model s all the teslas do have coat hangers in the back they're just kind of weird you just push this little button and they pop out there and you can hang up whatever you need. Tesla vehicles come with a Tesla branded cleaning cloth that is in the glove box. Yes, you would think people would see this, but it's really flat and it's dark. So if you just peek in there and you don't really use your glove box that much, you might miss it. But if you look in your glove box on your new Tesla vehicle, you will have a Tesla branded cleaning cloth. It's very nice used to clean your center screen, which you can go into the settings, put it into screen cleaning mode, and then you can clean it off. And if it's hard to get out of screen cleaning mode for you, if you don't want to touch the screen after you've cleaned it, you can quickly put your car into drive and that will pop it back out of screen cleaning mode for you. But yeah, that little cleaning cloth 
is awesome. And uh, now that I'm saying this, I realize maybe newer Teslas don't come with it, but I think they still do. Correct me in the comments if you've recently received a Tesla and didn't do that. Please, Tesla, don't take our cleaning cloth away. <laughs> it can't be that expensive and it's so nice. All right, now I didn't claim that these were all gonna be revolutionary ideas that only Tesla has ever thought of, but this one's pretty useful and not everybody knows that it's a thing. So when you open your trunk, it goes this high by default. But some people park in the garage and their garages have lower ceilings, so you don't want it going up and bumping the garage because the Model Y doesn't have any sensors to prevent that. So all you have to do is pull this down, say your garage is this tall, that's all you want it to open. Then you hold this button and hopefully you'll hear it. We got a ding in the car there, had to hold it for a second. Now it's locked into this position. So when I close it, obviously it will close like normal. And when I reopen it, my trunk is only going to open to that preset position. So if you have a shorter garage, it will not bump into the ceiling. Very useful. Of course, I want mine open all the way. So I'll lift it up there, hold the button again. And there we are. In case you didn't know, use Mars mode to uh, conceal your location when you're filming at home. Haha. -ha. Okay, this isn't exactly hidden, but I think there's a lot of features here people don't know about. So you go to your menu and you go to service and there are a lot of things here. So tire pressure, this only updates when you start driving. So those are my numbers from yesterday. And it says right there, it says yesterday on there. You also have tire service, sorry. You also have tire service mileage right here. So approximately 19,000 miles ago, I did something. Now I just haven't reset that, but you have to kind of remember to do that yourself. Uh, and here there's a lot of things. So like adjusting your headlights. Now this is something you gotta be really careful with, but I've heard and read people online, their headlights are not the best. And so they can use this. You gotta look up tutorials on how to do it, but they can use this to fix their headlights. You don't have to go anywhere or do anything like that. Wheel and tire is a huge bonus here because if you change to 20 inch wheels or 21 inch, now your range is worse, your miles per hour will be off. So you can change it here and update your car. These things used to be things you had to do through Tesla. You'd have to go to service or have them do it uh, over the air or something. Uh, over the air or something. Now you can do it all yourself, which is always good to be able to take care of you know your your car and stuff all by yourself. Uh, and then we have some calibration stuff here too. So driver's seat, steering and mirror calibration, super important if your seat uh, is just off, as if it moves a lot, like if you have multiple drivers or you use easy entry. You definitely want to use that. Now, we got to go a little more advanced here. So if you go into software and you hold your model, now this is kind of could mess you up. So if you're not confident, don't do it. But all we do is hold the model here. It'll give us a little blink. And then you get this secret S-E-R-V-I-C-E, -E, the secret service menu here for Tesla. And it warns you, you're only supposed to use this when you're stationary. Don't like be on the side of the road or something using this because it limits your car's speed and all these different things but this will give you a ton of information about your car. I actually used this service menu to uh, figure out that my GPS was weird in my new car, which ended up being a different problem, but I got it fixed and I could see through this menu what was going on with my car. So check this out. There is some really cool stuff in here. So if we go to our cameras here, you can see all the cameras are green. Sats are orange. There's only six satellites in use. Now I've been parked all day and I haven't driven anywhere. That'll update as you drive, but six, you know, is good enough to start with and then it'll pick up some more as you go. But if you're having problems, you can go in here and say like, oh, my camera's messed up, you know, that's why. And it tells you the camera type and everything. And so you go here and kind of have some more data if you wanna to go to Tesla with a problem or something. Again, this isn't really for the end user to use, but we do obviously have access to it. If Tesla didn't want us to have access to it, they could take this away from us. So I'm very happy to see it here. And then you can see some of your other sensors here. So, you know, uh, if you did have your radar up there, it says radar is green. My car actually doesn't have a radar in it, so that's pretty funny. But you can see all my ultrasonic sensors are here. They're all green and everything, you know, that you can check out. So this is just a really cool menu. You can look at your infotainment. Everything looks good. We're connected to our network. Roaming is allowed. We got our SIM in there and everything is working. Now, if you go into the charging here and go to the high voltage system, this is the page we're on now. This is something very cool to check out, health test. So you can actually test the health of your battery. This is something I wanna do. I'm about to do a 50,000 mile review and I'm gonna run this before I do that. Now you need to have your battery uh, low and then it'll charge all the way up and it'll do all these things. Um, and you need like probably a day to do this, maybe a little less, but I wanna have a day. Anyway, the point is, this is a very cool menu with lots of, lots of interesting stuff in it. Uh, for people to check out. And I think that uh, this could be useful if you're having a problem. And then when you're done, you just hold right here and you will exit the service menu. Everything's back to normal. Now, believe it or not, some people do not know how to turn their HVAC system off, their heating and cooling. What the heck do you do? You could turn it down all the way. You can go here and turn it to low, but there's no on or off button. Well, what you have to do here, you just hold. It's very simple. Now everything is off. That's it. 
And if you want to turn it back on, you simply click it and you're back, good to go. And then another thing you can do, which is really nice, is sharing locations from Google Maps directly to your car. So you go into Google Maps, you find wherever you wanna go, you click share, and then you have to find the Tesla app, and it will send that location directly to your car. So when you hop into your car, boom, it is automatically already routing you there. This is such a nice feature that I use all the time, but it's kinda hidden and not everybody knows about it. Another extremely useful feature in your Tesla a lot of people don't know about is the favorites feature on the map. So if you go into the map on your Tesla and you look at any destination, there is a little star there. You can click that star and make it a favorite. You can then rename this to whatever you want. If you want it to be your parents' house or your friend's house or whatever, you can then use the voice commands in your Tesla to navigate to this location. There are added benefits to doing this as well that are super useful. So when you have something like sentry mode, you can set it so sentry mode will not turn on at favorite locations or at your house or whatever you want. So something that I've set up is I have set my discount tire to a favorite location. That's where I go to get my tires rotated or get new tires or whatever I need. On top of that, I've set it so sentry mode will not enable at my favorite locations automatically. I have to enable it manually at those favorite locations. So now when I go to discount tire, there's none of this stuff where I'm forgetting that sentry mode's on. They go to take the tires off. The car starts blaring and doing all this stuff. Sentry mode just by default is not on when I'm at my favorite locations. And this is super useful. There's tons of other things I'm sure you could do with this, but that's just kind of the main example I have that I've used that I found very helpful. Now, not so useful, but really fun. If you click the charge port 10 times in your car, your little Tesla symbol in your vehicle will turn into a rainbow and flash all kinds of different colors. So that's fun, just a little Easter egg, uh, nothing really useful. I'm curious if the Cybertruck's special little symbol will do the same thing when we finally get that because the Cybertruck doesn't have a T symbol. It does have a light there, but it's in the symbol of a Cybertruck. Now, when you're on the map, there are some quick navigation options depending on your location, and I use this pretty much daily. Now, if you are at work and you have a normal nine to five like I do, when you get to your car in the morning to go to work, your car probably has already routed you to work and vice versa when you're leaving work and you're going home your car has probably already routed you home you don't have to do anything you just put it in drive and turn on FSD and arrive home having done nothing haha <laughs> but if you're not at one of those locations you're somewhere else you hop in your car and you want to go home you can simply swipe down or to the right on your little address bar there and it will automatically navigate you to home or if you're home and you do that it will automatically navigate you to work and again this is super useful it's something i use all the time i just swipe down i find that a lot easier than swiping farther away from me to the right uh, but just boop doing that down and boom my home address is automatically loaded into my car in one little swipe i don't have to click through menus or do anything else maybe tesla could update this so swiping down takes you home and swiping to the right takes you to a predetermined favorite that would be cool easy entry now this is a feature on a lot of higher priced cars, but it's something you got to set up and it's not that obvious in the Tesla and I've noticed a lot of people miss this. In your Tesla you have profiles for all your drivers, you know if multiple people drive your car, when you walk up with your phone, the seat and the steering wheel and all that will move to suit you. And when somebody else who has a profile with their phone linked to, to your car, when they walk up it will automatically switch all that stuff. If somebody doesn't have a phone linked, they can just manually select their name and their seat and everything will adjust, you know, to fit their driving style. Well, on top of that, there's an automatic easy entry mode, which you can use. So when you park the car, it will move everything out of the way. You can have the steering wheel out of the way. You can have the seat move back or up or down or whatever you want to make it easier and more comfortable to get into the car. Then once you go to put the car into drive, boom, everything will kind of shape around you. It's like a, some kind of robot or something and everything just kind of whirs into place and gets you ready to drive. Now, easy entry is really nice for like hanging out. If you're gonna sit in your car but not really drive right away, it, you can have some more room so you can kind of function and everything. Or if it makes it easier for you to get in and out of the car, if you have mobility issues or anything like that, easy entry can be a lifesaver. Now the emergency door release. I would say this one's a little controversial and some people don't know about this. There have been news stories where people are like trapped in their Tesla because they didn't know about this emergency door release. At the same time, I find that really strange because if you own a Tesla, you know, probably, that when you have friends or guests in the car who have never been in the car, they 90, I, I mean, I would basically say 100% of the time, 99, 100% of the time, 
they reach for this emergency door release on the Model 3, Model Y, and also the Refresh S and X before they use the actual button they're supposed to use to get out of the car. So in the front seats, it's a simple little latch on the left or right. If the car doesn't have power for some reason, that is a mechanically opening uh, switch that you can pull on and the doors will pop open with or without power. Now you will get a warning that this can damage your trim. Back in the day, many years ago, when you use that latch, the windows would not move down as they do when you use the button. But also a long time ago, many years ago, Tesla through a software update improved this. So if you do use that latch, either on accident or on purpose, if the car has power, the windows will come down a bit to save your trim. But if you can't get out of the car and there's no power and you have to use that, it will damage your trim. But if you're in that situation, it's probably worth it. Now getting into the back seats of the car is where it gets a little weird. All the Tesla models are different and I don't want to go into all of it. You can check them out in the user manuals. But in the Model 3 and Model Y, you can go into the door pockets and in the bottom of those, there'll be like a little string, almost like we talked about earlier with the emergency release for the port, for the charging port. And you pull this and it'll mechanically open the door. It's not my favorite thing. I actually kind of hate that it's so kind of hidden and buried away. Now I've never had to use this and hopefully I never will have to use this. I don't expect to, but for something like that, uh, I think it should be a little more obvious. At the same time, if you have kids back there, you don't want to make it so obvious that they're going to be pulling on it and <laughs> opening their doors when you're driving. So I think a little more of a balance of nice placement while having safe placement could be reached here. But as of now, that's how it's done. And then I will mention in the Model X, it's even crazier. We don't have a Model X anymore, although we did. You actually have to take off the grill, the speaker grill, to open those Falcon Wing doors. And it's simple if you know where it is, but if you don't know, you'd probably never find it. Um, and it's simple enough to do, but the doors are really heavy. So if you do have to do that emergency release, uh, yeah, you're gonna have a hard time pushing those doors out of the way, but you can do that if you really need to. Now, when you sit on the seats, if you're not buckled up, the car is gonna tell you, hey, buckle up. It'll have a little symbol on the screen for the driver to see so they can tell the people in the back or in the passenger seat, hey, you need to buckle up. Now, if you have a child back there that's heavy enough to trigger that weight sensor, but they're in a car seat, they may not need to buckle up. And this is kind of like a fun little Easter egg, but it's also pretty useful. If all you do is click on that little seatbelt unlatch symbol on the screen, it automatically changes it to a baby seat. <laughs> so then you won't get dings or alerts or alarms that the buckle is not belted and you can you know, drive away. So this is a really cool feature. It's useful, but it's also kind of funny and interesting at the same time. I'm just gonna end it right there.